Well, today I'm going to do some response videos to some video shorts that some of you have sent in. Occasionally, you guys will send me these videos and you'll say, can you please respond to this? I'm like, that's actually a good idea. I probably should. One thing is my audio on my end, when you hit the, hear the recording, audio will be good. My audio on my end is not all that great. That's the best I could come up with. I'm still kind of in transit here. So if you have a problem with my audio, you can send an email to toughshit at idontgivearatfuck.com. So uh, the first video here is a woman talking about Let's see, talking about non-monogamy, and let's see what she has to say. Monogamy was invented by men. Men need monogamy. Because uh, okay, she's right. That is absolutely correct. Monogamy, the entire concept was invented by dudes, not women. So, I mean, just think about this. The last 7,000 years of human civilization... Who's been in charge most of that time? Women or men or was it egalitarian? The answer was men from zero to, you know, 7,000 years or so of recorded history. Only up until the late 1960s. So that was just the last, what, uh, 50, 60 years ago, 55 years ago, something like that? Okay, just be, I was born in the late 70s, excuse me, the early 70s. So... 7,000 years of recorded history, men have been in charge. Only in the past 55 have women started to take control. And now, yes, today, women have a lot of control, of course. But never forget that monogamy was invented by men, going back to the Middle Ages and back to all kinds of things. Uh, we could do a whole thing about how marriage was a, you know, was a, was a financial transaction for families. And then that, that moved forward into the concept of uh, what became an agrarian society. Uh, your children became assets. And so if you're, you know, in the 1800s on Little House of the Prairie or a cowboy or something, and your wife has three children, how do you know for sure those kids are yours? You don't know because they didn't have paternity tests back then. They do now. But this all came from men. So she, so far, is correct. Also, here's the other thing. When she said men need monogamy, she's also correct. Why do I know that? Well, I've been coaching men and talking about men dating multiple women for about 15, 16 years. And it's actually not that hard. And even when I was doing it 16, 17 years ago, when it was not as common as it is today, it wasn't that difficult. It, 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 took, it was a little more difficult than today, but it wasn't that hard. However, if you flipped the genders and you have a woman dating multiple men, it's a nightmare. I have met and known several women who have tried to pull this off, and they have to, to varying degrees of success. It's really hard. Why? Because men are more needy than women. Men freak the fuck out. I mean, just think about this. Your girlfriend or your wife finds out she cheated, you cheated on her, right? And she's pissed. But often they, they'll they just deal with it because they go, okay, well, he's a guy, God, fucking asshole, right? And they move on. Flip the sexes. You find out you're in a traditional monogamous relationship with a girlfriend or wife. You find out your wife cheated on you. Do you get mad and get over it? Uh, no. You grab your shotgun and you want the guy's address, you go over to his house, right? At a bare minimum, you'll go out and scream at him or you'll call him on the phone and yell. I mean, I mean it gets fucking brutal. It gets bad. Another example. Let's say you have a traditional uh, monogamously married couple, okay? And uh, the guy goes to Las Vegas and fucks some random chick at a bar in Vegas when he's on a business trip, all right? He comes back to his wife and his wife finds out. Same deal. In most cases, not all. I mean, I'm generalizing. You don't have to generalize. There are always exceptions to talk about human beings. But in general, the wife is going to be fucking pissed. She's going to throw a pan in his head. And she's going to call her sister and say, he's such an asshole. Right? And then she'll get over it. Why? Because she'll rationalize. Say, well, he's a guy. It was some random thing. It didn't mean anything. All right, fine, dick. And she'll be pissed about it. She'll bring it up in future arguments. But she'll deal with it. Now, take the exact same scenario and switch the genders. Oh, my God. So now a married woman goes to Vegas on a, quote, business trip, hooks up with some guy with a big cock, right, down in Vegas, goes back to his husband. His, her husband finds out. How does he react? It is a whole different level. So men do need monogamy more than women. Men freak out about this much worse than women do. That's why, thankfully, if you're a man, it's easier to manage a relationship where you are a man dating multiple women than it is for women dating multiple guys. I mean, I've talked to many of these women. I, I, maybe we should do a podcast or a video on this, just on those women. 
the, the things these women go through, men freak the fuck out. They cry. I mean, literally, they go, oh, what the fuck you? they scream, they bitch, they yell, they go crazy in ways that women don't. Whereas, do you have that experience dating multiple women? It's rare. We rarely, we men, as long as you're following alpha male two pro models, it's rare that we have that experience. It, it happens, but it's like the exception rule. I've, I, I've come across occasionally hyper jealous women, but it's the exception, not the rule. So, so far, she is correct. Because they wanted to, the average, was it because the average man wanted to have a beautiful woman? No. Why was it? No. Monogamy is necessary because. I like how she says no. Like only a black woman can say no, you asshole. If you say we're going to develop a polygamous community, well, what will happen is what the women will do, because women, we are genetically wired to want to procreate with the biggest strongest, richest man. This right. is embedded in us. It's nothing anyone can play God to say that I'm not like that. Yes, you are, sis. God made you that way. Mm -hmm. And it's for a reason. It's how you... You know, what's fascinating about this is a black woman is more likely to be honest about these things <laughs> than a white girl who's going to be very left-wing and very appropriate and trying not to say anything wrong and trying to say anything controversial, even if she gets mad, even if she's a feminist. So I love black women. I mean, I'm not into black women sexually, although she's really cute. So I, th I think it's hilarious that it has to be a black woman to say this, to bluntly say something that Rolo Tomasi would say. It's kind of funny. You keep the human race going. Not all men are meant to be carried on. Some are meant mm -hmm. to die out. And uh, That's the clip. Some are meant to die out. So I, that's one of the reasons that people got pissed off about this clip, I think. Um, well, is she wrong or is she right? I don't have a strong opinion about this. But I didn't get reactive to like, how dare she say that some men shouldn't be allowed to procreate? Well, if you're thinking in terms of Darwinism, yes, the strongest procreate and the weakest die off, and that's nature. And so unfortunately, and a lot of people hate it when I say this, but it's true, we are animals. Christians, particular, no, we're not. Yes, we are. We are animals. We are higher evolved animals for some odd reason than any other creature on earth. There's a lot of theories about like alien seeding worlds and things like that. But we are animals, so we are under that model of the strongest procreate, the weakest don't. Now, if you turn into Jordan Peterson, who's going to be the next clip, and say that we should have enforcement monogamy because all men should be allowed to procreate, okay, that's one view. The other view is that, yeah, the strongest men, or in our case, the modern era, the strongest slash richest men, or the best looking men, or the most successful men, in other words, the highest SMV men are the men who should be allowed to procreate. And the total loser with no money, who's fat and disgusting and overweight and, and is an incel and lives in his basement, probably shouldn't uh, procreate. I don't have that view either. Uh, this is really a matter of opinion and a matter of philosophy, so I have no hard, hard, hard yes or no on this. But I don't get reactive about this because I, I see the logic in both viewpoints. Cool? All right, let's look at the next clip, which is our favorite person, Jordan Peterson. Now, before I get into detail on, on this specific clip, in terms of my view of Jordan Peterson, I've been very clear about this in my blogs and videos and things like that. I have no major problem with Jordan Peterson. I think he's fine. Um, Jordan Peterson, as I've said many times, is a tradcon, right-wing, traditional Christian conservative who is smart enough, usually, to cloak that and not talk about that because he knows how insane that sounds. So instead, he he... He puts that aside, talks about self-help and clean your room and things like that. But never forget, Jordan Peterson is a hardcore tradcon, hardcore right-wing, traditional conservative Christian. And that's where everything he talks about comes from. Um, obviously, I don't agree with any of that because that's Christianity is another form of societal programming like anything else, just like socialism, communism, left-wing stuff too. Um, my major issue with Jordan Peterson is not with him, but with his followers. A very similar uh, critique I have of Peter Zion. I like Peter Zion for the most part. I agree for the most part what he says, but his followers are maniacs. Same thing with Jordan Peterson. I've got a lot of maniacal Jordan Peterson people on my content. I say, so Jordan Peterson says this, happiness doesn't matter. So fuck you, Caleb. Yeah. Um, so anyway, let's see what Jordan Peterson has to say about non-monogamy. Uh, this should be fun. Societies tilt towards monogamy across the world. It's human universal. Now, that doesn't mean that people don't have polygamous or polyamorous tendencies. Okay, so that is accurate, but I'm going to correct him slightly. Modern day societies tilt toward monogamy. Now, monogamy did not become a thing in the world, like in the world, 
until the collapse of the Roman Empire, Roman Empire under uh, Constantine. Constantine was the first Christian Roman emperor. And so as soon as he converted to Christianity, all of a sudden he started approaching this concept of monogamy. Prior to that, monogamy was not a thing in society. And uh, the Roman, especially including the Roman Empire and prior to the Roman Empire, I mean, it was very common in the Roman Empire and other cultures at the same time as the Roman Empire and prior to the Roman Empire, where a man and woman would get married. And if the man had sex with other women, the wife didn't care. As long as he was home by six and paid the bills and took care of the kids and protected the family, she didn't give a shit. If you watch the um, HBO series Rome, which was back when TV was good many, many years ago, fantastic series. And they tried to base as much of it, in fact, as they could. And there are several scenes in there where, uh, <laughs> you know, a man and a woman who are like maybe upper class. Uh, there's one scene in particular where Mark Anthony has a girlfriend. This is before Cleopatra. He's laying in bed and his wife or girlfriend, I don't remember. She's on the on the desk, you know, brushing her hair, getting ready for the day. It's the morning. He's like, come over, let's have sex. She's like, I don't have sex. I'm getting ready for the day. Screw you. And he's like, well, you know, I'm not getting out of bed till I fuck somebody. She's like, okay, hang on. Okay, Susie, she calls in one of the slave girls. She yeah, three or four slaves. Yes, ma'am. Will you please fuck my husband so we can get out of bed because we got to go? Yes, ma'am. So literally the slave goes over and fucks the husband right in front of the wife. She does not care. It's not a big fucking deal. And that's how it used to be until, say it with me, Christianity. And then when Christianity became the biggest religion in the world, then, yes, around the whole world, monogamy became the norm. And even Asian cultures started moving in that direction, although there were a lot of holdouts in Asian cultures. As late as the 19, early 1980s, you still had non-monogamous marriages in places like Cantonese, China, Hong Kong, and places like that. So he's right. Today, most cultures skew toward monogamy. Uh, that is slowly changing as monogamy continues to get worse and worse and worse. But he's technically right in terms of today. Because they certainly do. And it's certainly also the case that one of the women, ways that women gerrymander this system is that like the number of women, children who are in a, say, say you're married and you have children with your husband, but you also have an affair. Okay, I know where this is going. This is a common right-wing Christian critique of non-monogamy and it's stupid. I'm about to discuss why it's stupid. So you have a child by another man. That's more common. As I just talked about a few minutes ago common than anyone suspected. Yes, that is very common. Something like, the, the statistics are all over the place on this, 11% to 18% of men who think their kids are theirs are actually not theirs. Yes, because monogamy doesn't work. Correct. <laughs> so part of the way, way that women solve the problem that you're just describing, and I'm, and I'm not saying anything for this or against this, this is a purely factual biological claim is they pick a monogamous marriage and they cheat with high status guys. Yes. Yes. Uh, the, the red pill saying is uh, beta, bu alpha fucks, beta bucks. Yes. Many of the women, I uh, talk about how I have a 94% return rate. Okay. Many of the women I've been with in the past stopped seeing me, went and either got serious, had a serious boyfriend with a beta male or moved in with a beta male boyfriend or married a beta male boyfriend and then cheated with me circled back once she, she had them established and he's paying her bills and kissing her ass, Mr. Beta male, she comes back to the alpha male for sex. Yes. And I've had more than one scenario where, and I didn't do this, but I've had women ask me or suggest it or say during sex or even outside of sex, these are women who have live in boyfriends or husbands, uh, ask or imply they want me to impregnate them and have babies with them. Don't worry, I'll just tell my boyfriend, my husband, that it's his. Yes, now I didn't do that. <laughs> but I've had women ask or imply heavily. Okay? This is another dynamic. Again, monogamy doesn't work. Long-term monogamy doesn't work. Men don't like it. Men like to fuck other people. And women don't like it. They both don't like it. Now, I will address the uh, having a kid with someone else in a minute. So I don't know if I can turn Let's see if he circles back to that, I'm not sure. Now, you know, obviously in the confines of the marriage, that's a terrible thing, but... That's a very uncomfortable subject, though, <laughs> for women in particular. Well, it's an uncomfortable subject for everyone. Right. Is that... That's the end of the clip. Yeah, and, you know, if people acknowledge this, then you would have a lot less chaos in society. Um, I remember very clearly, very vividly, years ago, back when I was a beta male, and I'm in my first marriage, 
in a traditional monogamous marriage. Um, when I first started hearing about this, this is like, we're going back like 25 years ago. This is like the late 90s, early, early 2000s, like 2001, somewhere in there. So a long, long time ago, when these kinds of statistics weren't well known, um, my wife at the time and I were watching one of these news shows, like 48 Hours or something. And there was a man on there who had three kids with his wife. And um, he found out that the kids were not his, all three of them, or three or two. I think it was three kids. My God. And then you see this family photo. It's hilarious. The white, the wife is as white as me. The husband is as white as me. The kids are a little not white, just a little darker skin. All three kids like, bro, that's not your, those are your fucking 20, you moron. This guy was obviously an idiot, but he found out through paternity testing. These were not his kids. <laughs> After three or four years, he's like, Hey, they don't have the same skin tone. It's me or their mother. So she fucked another guy, got impregnated by another guy, the entire marriage. And the guy got her pregnant. Okay. So what he was trying to do was, uh, they were getting divorced, obviously. He was trying to contest the child support. And as usual, the United States government said, fuck, you know, you have to pay for these kids. It doesn't matter if they're biologically yours or not. Welcome to the land of the free in the United States. Uh, Canada is very similar. The UK is also very similar. And I had never seen anything like this before. And I, and I, it's interesting. This is an interesting dynamic between how women feel about this, how men feel about this. Um, I, I remember going, oh my God, that's terrible. He has to pay for these kids that aren't his? This is ridiculous. How, how awful. Which I thought was the obvious viewpoint. And my wife at the time, to my horror and shock back then today, I understand. But back then, she, she actually said, oh, that's just stupid. He's being stupid. And I was shocked. My mouth just hung open. I looked at her like, what? She goes, yeah, he's being stupid. He's just being silly. I'm like, what do you mean? Those aren't his kids. She cheated on him numerous times. And tricked him into raising the kids that aren't his. And my wife was like, my wife at the time, my ex-wife, she said, you know what? That doesn't matter. What? That doesn't matter. She goes, her logic, her woman logic was someone has to take care of those kids. Someone needs to take care of, someone needs to pay for those kids. You know, their school and their clothes. And, their, and you know, he's the breadwinner. Someone needs to take care of them. I went, yeah, the biological father should fucking take care of them. They should go after his dumb ass. Now, I bet you, I don't remember this in the story, but I would bet real money. That the reason this wife was pushing, this ex-wife was pushing this, is that the biological father was probably an alpha male loser in terms of a low-income alpha. He was probably a really good-looking, big, buff black man or whatever the hell he was. He wasn't white. <laughs> and he probably didn't have shit for money. So women, when they look around for who they want child support from, they look at the guy with the biggest income, the beta male in most cases or many cases, and they go after him. Now, let me talk really quick about... Uh, this thing about, uh, well, I want to make sure those kids are mine. Because I've seen this excuse many times when I used to debate monogamy a lot on the internet. Today, people don't really fuck with me on this because they've learned that monogamy doesn't work. But back when this was years ago, and I was talking about this, and this was a revolutionary thing to say that monogamy didn't work. A bunch of right-wing conservative guys will say, this is ridiculous. I want to make sure my kids are mine. Dumb fuck. You can buy a paternity test at Walgreens for $20. As I've talked about in other videos and podcasts and articles, you get something called an NIPP. That means you can actually get a blood test when she's pregnant to get a paternity test before the baby even comes out. This is not the Middle Ages. This is not the 1800s. We have the technology today. They're very quickly and easily find out if that's your kid. So you never need to worry about, I don't want to get stuck with a kid that's not mine. You won't, provided you're smart and DNA test your kids. And by the way, I did this when I was a young, stupid beta male married in my first marriage. I knew immediately it took a few years, but maybe it was after I had that conversation with my then wife, like, hey, I don't know. I don't know about this. And I had my, my I had my daughter, my son I adopted. My daughter was, DNA, I had my daughter DNA tested to make sure she was my daughter. Everyone should do that. And frankly, you should, these days should do that as soon as she gets pregnant. Get that NIPP done and then you know. So this thing about, I don't want to get sad with kids that aren't mine. I don't want to have that problem. You won't ever have that problem. You live in the 21st century where that's not an issue. It is an absolute stupid bullshit excuse. If you guys have more videos or clips or anything you want me to respond to, send them on in to, uh, let's see, what's my email? The only black dragon at gmail.com. And I'm not saying I will do it, but if I find them interesting, I will do that. And I'll do resp response videos like this. You guys seem to like these. Cool? Cool. Bye.